Uh, Dr. Kenneth, I think we can. Yes, start, yes, right? yes, sir. Hmm. Can start? Yes, yes. So, um, let me say a few words first. Eh? <laughs> so, okay, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, thank you, um, Dr. Kenneth. Um, so, um, uh, uh, guys, uh, Salamakan, good morning. Um, thank you for joining us. So, our topic here is uh, OER, right? OER, yeah. uh, Open Education Resources and Open Licensing. So, I guess, Dr. Kenneth, our session will take only about one and then one and a half hours. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Kenneth is Associate Professor. Dr. Kenneth is the, our Deputy Director at the Center. So, he will do the sharing. Um, as you know, as I said, uh, some may be familiar about OER, some may not. So, I think um, over to you, Dr. Kenneth. You may start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hafizi. And thank you very much to the Dean. Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Jeffrey and the faculty at Lab One for inviting us over for this presentation. This is an online presentation. Earlier we used to do a physical presentation. Hopefully in the future we can uh, conduct a physical presentation for you. Uh, this presentation will be recorded. So I will uh, I will ask uh, Mr. Zulfadli and to record. He is joining us here, and he will also assist us with the process of registration for those of you who have not registered. Okay, so Salamat Pagi, Salam Sajatra, and Salam Campus Rama. Today I will be uh, introducing you to the OER ecosystem at UMS. Now, what is this OER ecosystem, and why does why does UMS adopt this OER ecosystem? One of the key objectives of the university is the global visibility. So we want to make UMS visible globally in the context of educational resources. And the OER is the perfect platform for these kind of promotion of UMS in a global scale. It also uh, offers our lecturers the opportunity to showcase their respective strengths in terms of research. Because the OER repository is a searchable database and in fact, it has been uh, popularized in different uh, platforms. And MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is one of the first universities in the world to commence their large-scale OER database. Now, with, within the context of this OER database, there are certain things which we need to understand. The first thing is regarding the sharing of content. Okay, now. I want to make it very clear that there'll be two types of content which you will create as a academician. The first type of content is your intellectual property. This will fall in the domain of copyrights. And this should not be shared in an OER repository. I will reiterate that later on and explain to you the basis for copyrights as well as the basis for content which can be shared via an OER platform. Okay, so let's look at what we are going to learn today. Okay, all these slides, the link has been shared with you so you can download and reuse these slides. Okay, if you notice at the bottom of the slide, on the right hand side, I put something which is known as CCBY. Okay, this designates an open license. So CCBY means you can download the slide, you can reuse it, you can edit it, and you can even add your name onto it, and you can even market or sell it. Okay, and I as the content creator, has no objection to that. So this is what that license actually means. The CCBY at the, at the bottom of the page. Okay, so what are we going to learn today and what are we going to focus on? The first concept which I want to introduce you is the concept of the OER itself. Okay, for your for today's presentation, this uh, will have around one hour, but I also have a condensed video on YouTube. I can share it with you in which everything is discussed in around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I can give that reference video on YouTube. But today we are going to look at what is OER, what is the concept of OER, and we clarify this concept within the context of the UMS policy on uh, copyrights. Okay, we have an intellectual property policy. You can download it from the website at the RMC, the PPI, and this will uh, this defines the copyright policy of UMS. Okay, so OER is an extension of that sh content sharing but it does, it's not covered under copyright. So I want to introduce this concept to you. The next one is generation of an OER license, which can be done individually using the OER website, Creative Commons. Then I will teach you how to post content and what can and cannot be hosted, the specifics of 
for instance, content which cannot be shared online and how to link your OER content to other resources such as your maybe on your Facebook page or your social media, you can link your OER content using a specific OER handler or handle, what we call a handle, uh, repository handle. Okay, so please um, interrupt me at any time. And uh, if you need to clarify any of these points, specifically the one regarding copyrights. Okay, now this term open educational resources has been coined by the UNESCO and it has been adopted globally as part of the development, uh, UNESCO's development for open education. Okay, now the right to education is one of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is actually one of our components at UMS. We try to work within the framework of the SDGs and one of them is the right to education. Now, why is this right to education become so relevant in today's world? It's because of the concept of inclusivity. So inclusivity not only uh, refers to different um, like regions of the world or different kinds of races or uh, geographic locations. Inclusivity also involves the persons with disabilities who have no access to this kind of knowledge. So within the context of OER, the content has to be adopted or adapted to cater to the needs of persons with disabilities, even those who are having intellectual disabilities. So this is one of the overall philosophies of the OER movement. Now, where does this OER actually start? Where did it all start? It began with one of the first institutions which has been aggressively promoting OER is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Okay, and if you go to their website, this MIT Open Courseway, you can find a wealth of resources in specific areas of uh, science and technology as well as the fact humanities and social sciences. You can find a lot of information here. In fact, you can download all this information and you can reuse it as part of your course material. And this course material can be shared among your student, provided that you attribute the original source. Okay, so we have a specific way in which we attribute the content. Now, content creation does not necessarily mean you have to start creating your content from scratch. You don't have to start with, for example, you start with a lecture note. You can actually use the content which exists in the Creative Commons repository. And you can remix this content and you can share it again. So this is all part of the process of sharing content. There's also one important concept which is curation. Take, for example, you're an uh, expert in your field and you share your content on an OER repository, a UMS OER repository, somebody downloads your content and he or she will reshares your content in their class or in their tutorial and so on and so forth. Now, the fact that somebody who's an expert in the field has created content and shared this content contributes to the process of creation, content curation. Now, how does this help you? It helps you because when someone who's an expert shares your content, you also get value addition for that content and your visibility improves. So this is the overall philosophy of, uh, of the open licensing. We are trying to create an ecosystem where each individual or each academician gets recognition on a global scale. Okay, that, so you may not feel it now, but maybe around five years down the line, if you start posting, posting content, eventually you will have a following base on your OER content. Okay, now what exactly is open educational resources? This question is asked by many lecturers or those who are new in the field. OER is any kind of content, okay, which can be distributed online. So that means it's it's open content which is distributed online. A printed book will not be constituted OER because it stays in a library, a physical repository. An OER is any electronic content. This can include audio recordings, video recordings shared on YouTube or other social media. It can include the uh, your lecture notes. It can include even a single photograph which has been annotated. Okay, you have a photograph, for example, uh, with a specific annotation, you can include that in an OER. So it's any medium. It's not only limited to text and images, it's all media. 
And this media has to be shared on an open license in order to be classified as an OER. So software, for example, you, you would be download uh, free and open source software for some, from some uh, servers. That is also part of the OER, it's open solutions, open access and open data. So open data generally nowadays for all publications, when we publish in peer review journals, our data has to be deposited in public repositories for access and validation. So this is also part of the OER data, uh, OER databases. Okay, now let us look at the concept of the OER and where it fits in the con context of intellectual property creation. Now, each and every one of you, all of us are basically content creators. We are creating content. In fact, today's entire YouTube ecosystem and the social media ecosystem is driven by content creation. Everyone is trying to create more and more content. But how do you distribute this content and get recognition for it? The first one is public domain. Okay, public domain means I put an image online and it will remain go online and then anyone can download it, reuse it, remix it and commercialize it. Okay, that's the public domain. So a lot of data which was previously copyrighted earlier is now in the public domain. Okay, so everyone can reuse it. You can find those old black and white pictures of World War II and even uh, data from 1970s and 1980s is actually now in the public domain. So this public domain uh, content is hosted, for example, images are hosted on something known as Pixabay. So there are open uh, public domain servers. Now this images you can download, reuse and remix without attribution, which means that they do not have, need to be attributed. Now, how does this actually help the content creator? Sometimes uh, data which is in the public domain is having specific metadata tags. Okay, So as the data is shared, that popularity of that content creator increases. So they create public domain image or less restrictive licenses. The other one is Creative Commons. When you use any content from Creative Commons, you must cite or attribute the content creator. That is the key of Creative Commons. So public domain, you won't get any citations, but Creative Commons, you will get citations. Okay, now this also extends to publications as well, because we have what are known as the free print servers. You can find a free print server for your specific subject area. Just Google and search free print server for your, your subject area. Now these free print servers also host content which is open licensed under a CC BY license. So you can host your content there. And most of the journals nowadays, the uh, Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, they will accept papers which are hosted on a preprint server. It's not a violation of copyright. It's not considered plagiarism. But you need to check with the respective journals. So if you are writing a manuscript and you have some data, you can actually host it on a preprint server under a CC BY license. And then you can uh, send it for peer review based on the journal. So this is another form of open licensing, which allows you to boost or increase your publication and visibility. Of course, you must remember the point that open uh, the servers, like preprint servers, which are open license, are not hosting peer reviewed content. They will only check for plagiarism and then host the content. Okay, now what is this creative commons? Okay, I will just uh, move over to a next step, which is a creative commons website. Now this is Creative Commons. Okay. Now there are Creative Commons licenses which you can create from this particular web page, and you can also download or search for images. Let's look at a simple CC image search. For example, I'm looking for CC image search, and for instance, you're, you're from the Faculty of uh, Business Management or the Faculty, uh, and then you're doing some kind of finance search, so you can look in the search. Okay, so you look for this search, and for example, we are looking for search for images on currency. I just type the word currency and I want images only and I search. Okay, so let the search engine go through. Now there are a lot of images on currency over here. So if I want to use this image on currency in my presentation or my lecture note, I can actually mouse over and I can find the license. Okay, now let's click on this image just for, this, for your reference just look at one image and because I want to show you the process license. Okay, now this is an image of a bank note and so on and so forth. Now, you can download this image and you can reuse it, but you need to credit the creator. Okay, I'll just zoom on this. 
So this image was marked with the CC BY 2.0 license, which means that you can download this license, provide it, you have this kind of attribution at the bottom of your slide. For example, I download this image and I copy and paste in my slide. I have to go and put this uh, attribution. So I have to copy this text. So it says currency was on back, white background, which is the title of the image. It's license and sometimes you have the name of an author. So I just copy this text and I insert this image in my slide or lecture note, but I paste the source code below that. So this is the, uh, the tassel attribution, which is the title, author, the source and the license. So when you do this, you are basically legally in the right. Okay, so you're correct in terms of the uh, presentation of the image along with the attribution. But if I downloaded this image and reuse, reused it without this particular attribution, it's basically violating the ethics of the open, uh, open licensing. Okay, so unlike copyrights, in this case, nobody will come and sue you, but it's not good for your like your long term reputation because all of these images have metadata. OK, and the metadata with today's uh, artificial intelligence and tracking the metadata can actually be tracked and you can find out who is using your images. And then it's not good for the in terms of the ethics. OK, but no one can take legal action against you for using an image without attribution. But please avoid doing that. So this is the source for all images in the creative, which are in the Creative Commons. Okay, I just go back to my slide. Okay, so this is Creative Commons. Now, there was a question related to Creative Commons: Is that is Creative Commons a legal entity? For example, in Malaysia, we have the Malaysian Intellectual Property. Of organization or my po right my my ipo now if you want to copyright any content or if you want to have a trade secret or innovation or patent you have to file it under my po that will fall under the jurisdiction of the malaysian government and the malaysian intellectual property ecosystem now this is also linked to the pto the patent treaty organization and so on and so forth but if you want to copyright your material please do not deposit it in a oer server or in any other public domain because when you file for a patent or intellectual property, it will appear as a prior art search. For example, if you have some algorithm or some method which is unique to your respective subject area, please do not post it in the public domain because when someone searches for that content, they will find it and then the MIPO will not entertain your intellectual property application. So this is something which has to be clarified at this stage. Okay, these are the licenses. Now I've shown you a lot of licenses in one go so it's like looking a lot uh, very confusing but what we want what we need to look at is the type of license under which ums shares this content so in order to uh, find out which license i will take you to the oer page okay so this is oer.ums.edu.my okay so this is the our ums oer repository and if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you will see our license over here i will just zoom on this so you can see it more clearly Okay, so our license is actually CC, which is Creative Commons. It is BY, which means you have to be attributed. It's non-commercial and share alike, which means that the content which you share has to be shared under the same license. Now, this means that no one can commercialize any content which you have posted over here. For example, if you're a lecturer and you post your slides, your PowerPoint slides on, this, on the OER server and someone commercializes them, conducts a course using your slides, then you can take action against them because they violate the CCBY policy. Okay. So these are the various licenses. So CCBY is the most free license. And then you have the most restricted license right down here, which is CCBY, NC, and ND. What this license is means is that it's a Creative Commons license with attribution, but it cannot be commercialized and it cannot be derivatized. Now, derivatized image means, suppose I had a simple example is this. Suppose you have an image which is color, color image, which you have in a CCBY with a non-derivatized license. It means that you cannot modify the image. You cannot use Photoshop. You cannot, uh, for example, you cannot uh, change the Chrome, monochrome, and so on and so forth. You cannot modify that image at all. So that's a no derivative. 
where this becomes important is in the cases of scientific data. For example, if you post some scientific data online, like a map or an image which should not be manipulated, then you have to have a no derivatives uh, symbol on that. So that's a CCBY ND. So no derivatives means that image cannot be manipulated. This is very relevant in scientific data because sometimes somebody can reuse your image by manipulating certain data points and then you will be uh, basically attributed, not attributed and it creates issues for, uh, regarding, for instance, plagiarism or authenticity. Okay, so this is a very specific type of license which is non-derivatives. The least restrictive license is the CC BY. So again, a word of caution when you use this license for your material, I use it all the time because I don't claim ownership for any of the things I create. But if you have a right, if you want to have ownership of your material, please do not use this license because what it means is that anyone can download your material, they can reuse it, and they can remix it, they can even commercialize it. So this is the least restrictive of license, but they will attribute you. That is one of the limit, uh, one of the advantages. Okay, so this is. A license which you should not use if you are, for example, modules, you are developing modules which you are teaching in a course at Plums, which is a, uh, a Plums, which is a income generating course, or you are doing your own specific course. Don't use this license because it, then people can reuse your content. And the most restrictive license is this one, which is CCBY and CND. In fact, if you have this kind of license, it's better to go in for a copyright and have a copyright claim on your content. Okay, now for at the center for e-learning, we are basically managing the OER repository. If you need to file for copyrights or any other intellectual property under MIPO, you have to uh, visit the PPI website and download the forms. Okay, there are Borang IP1 and IP2. So that's for content which you need to copyright. One example of copyright is your lecture content. You can actually um, compile all your lecture notes in a folder or in a as an ebook or maybe even as a physical document and you can file for copyright so this falls under a different category because for copyrights you will have the right to that for a certain period of time uh, and then all the income from that will come back to you however you must remember that according to the mipo regulations ums is the owner of all the things which we create or the employer is the owner of all the things which you create within UMS. So even though we may be working outside the office, outside of office hours, whatever content we create is actually owned by UMS because we are earning a salary from UMS. So UMS owns that content. Okay, so that's the regulation in my book. The employer owns all the content which the, which the employee has created as long as that employee is, uh, uh, is basically under the employment of the organization. Okay, so that's one thing you should clear. Uh, be clear about so we cannot actually create content and then uh, file for a copyright outside of ums for that you'll need special permission but with regard to this license it's your choice your, it's at your discretion okay now i will go through the step-by-step -step process of generating an open license it's very simple all you do is we go back to our oer website which is the creative commons we look at the open licensing website and we want to click on share your work. So you click on this icon for share your work and then you have to choose the license. Now, unlike the intellectual property license, for example, if we file under MIPO, we will have a code for that. We'll have a code for the date of filing and application number and a grant, patent grant number or a copyright will be issued and a letter will be issued by MIPO. In this case, there is no official letter issued. What it does is this site creates a license for you. Okay, so you have to create a license. So go to this link which says share your work and then you click on this icon here which says get started, click on this link and then it will guide you to the process. Now, how do you generate this license? Okay, you don't have to have a legal expertise in uh, copyrights in order to do it. The website will help you as it guides you through the process. Okay, now the first question it asks you is allow adaptations of your work to be shared, which means that are you open to allowing uh, modified versions of your, for example, your lecture notes to be shared? If yes, you click yes. If you click no, it's, it will know, it will change the license type. You can see the license changing here. 
on the selective license. And if I say yes, as long as others share alike, it will you'll see this share alike icon over here. Okay. Allow commercial uses of your work, yes or no. So if you click no, it will change. So it says no dollar sign. Now you will notice something which appears over here, which is this free culture license. Okay, this free culture license is something which is um, given only to those which permit this one. So if you if you block commercial usage of the work, the free culture license will disappear. Now there have been many debates or opinions about this particular form of licensing. Some people say, oh, it's we are earning, uh, we are using our time and our resources and actually the university resources to create the content and then we are allowing others to commercialize it. So uh, in that case, this is the reason why we have on our uh, OER website, we have the non-commercial. So we don't want uh, UMS lecturers or academicians work to be reused in the context of the commercial uh, like come, uh, income generation. So that should be actually within the domain of our UMS lecturers. So income generation, that's why our website says uh, we don't allow commercial use of our work. Okay. So that's the, the, base, uh, the basis of our license. Now, suppose I created a license which says allow adaptations of my work, yes, and allow commercial use of my work. I generated this license and I copied. So what I do is all you need to do is copy this code if you have a website. All you do is copy copy this content. Okay, so you copy this license and you paste it on your slide. So it will say that this work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Okay, if you want, uh, so this is how you create or generate that license. Now, suppose you want to have attribution. Okay, you can click. You can uh, clear, create metadata. Okay, metadata is something which will be attached or embedded in your image or whatever content you have shared in the creative Commons. So this will be a metadata file and the metadata is actually good for you. So I would suggest that you use the metadata. For example, your metadata will say picture. The title of your work will be a picture and you attribute your name will be, for example, I just use Mr. Hafizi's name. So Hafizi and you put your name as in your citation. Attribute the work with URL so you can give a URL, which is the universal resource locator for the location of your content. Now, with regard to the content, right? You should ensure that your content is in a repository which will not be deleted because if you de if you create content and you delete it, then your attribution will be lost. So please uh, use the UMS OER and in this UMS in this URL, you can use the URL of the UM, uh, of the UMS OER. OK, I will show you how to extract your handle later on. Then you work with your permissions if you have any and the format of the work. Okay, so you have format which allows you, for example, audio, video, image, data set, and so on and so forth, and your license mark. Okay, so this is actually um, uh, telling about the markup files and so on and so forth. Now, this is the attribution file. So you can see what happens once I created the attribution file. What happens is that the code has the content or the metadata has changed. So when you copy and paste this into your web page, or, or in, even in your blog post, you can actually create a metadata file. Okay, now this is basically how you have your create your license. So all you do is copy this and you paste it, and then you, people will have to cite you and uh, based on this particular citation. Okay, now you can also look inside the uh, web page inside the Creative Commons. This is actually like a search engine. You can look for all types of content. Uh, you can look for, for example, audio resources, images, and all content. All content generally refers to text-based material. Okay, so you can find a wealth of material in the Openverse uh, link from CCBY Creative Commons. Okay, so this is how you generate your open license. I hope you are very clear about this. If you have any content, uh, any question regarding the content creation and the license generation, you can ask me or you can post in the chat window or you can turn on your microphone. Okay. So anytime you want, you can ask me or at the end of the session, we, we will have a sharing and we can go into the specifics. Okay. So as I told you, metadata is very important because in today's world of connectivity, you are actually creating a digital footprint based on the metadata. 
everything which you do is tracked to your metadata and you actually have a footprint of your visibility. Today we have the, uh, for example, you have H index and all that for tracking your citations, right? But as time goes by, you will actually have an index based on your product. In fact, these index indices are there, but it's just that uh, we don't recognize them. There are indices which check your digital footprint. For instance, uh, in uh, YouTube, you can actually track your digital footprint based on the views of your videos and the accessibility and so on and so forth. Okay, now the next uh, co component is the repurposing of OER material. Can you download somebody's uh, slide? For example, can you take this uh, presentation which I'm doing now? Then you can, can you modify certain slides or delete certain slides, add your own slides and reuse it? Yes, absolutely, because this is a CCBY license. Can you do it with US material, uh, UMS material? Yes, you can do it as well, provided you share it on the same license. So you, if you take download from UMS OER, this lecture note, you will have to distribute it under the same license as UMS because it's a share alike license. Okay, so what happens with this is your visibility gets in, in, increased and your citations also gets increased. Okay, now in the Myra, actually earlier, I don't know the latest version of Myra, uh, this is actually uh, considered as an online material. So it's a digital material. It's a non-peer reviewed digital material, which is actually captured under the Myra. We have to wait for the current uh, assessment of Myra in order to determine because the Myra will change the assessment in each, uh, in each year. So earlier we, it was the previous year, it's actually considered as a digital uh, material, which is a non-peer reviewed publication. So it carries a certain score. That Okay, now comes the repository at UMS. Okay, I will just change my tab to our repository. So this is our UMS repository. Okay, now some of you may have a license, uh, a li uh, sorry, uh, account here, and some of you may not. Uh, usually, I think the new lecturers may not have an account and may not be aware of the process of registration. Okay, so I have uh, Nora here. So uh, I just I just call her. She's outside my room. Uh, Nora, uh, can you help when they are asking for registration? Yeah, they will ask for registration, the lecturer, so can you assist with the registration? Okay, so Nora is here with me behind the TEP office. And those of you who don't have an account, I would encourage you to open an account now because we can give you a direct uh, access to the OER uh, site. Okay, now the OER is not part of our single sign-on at UMS, and there is there's a reason for this. This OER is open to the rest of the world. So because security settings, we don't uh, link it back to our HR online and our SMPPI and so on and so forth. This is by itself. Okay, so for this one, you have to generate a new password. Okay, now how you do that is by, uh, by logging in. You can register here. I cannot uh, re uh, register because I already have an account. So click on the register button here, okay? And then use your UMS email address and you just click on the register tab. I cannot do it now because I'm already registered. But if you are a new lecturer at UMS, go to registration and then you key in your UMS with the at the rate of ums.edu.my and then you register here. Once we register, our uh, Miss Nora will receive a message in the inbox and she will directly allocate you to a specific collection, okay? So collection and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is how you do it. So I encourage you to do it now if you don't have one already. Okay, now once you are registered, you will receive a link in your email. You click on the link and you follow the link to the OER repository. And please, for security reasons, please do not use the same password as you use for UMS. You create a new password for this because of security reasons, okay? This is outside of the UMS domain, it goes in the global domain. Now, what's unique about this uh, website is something known as DSpace. Okay? Now, DSpace is actually an uh, open repository. It's used by multiple organizations across the world, multiple universities, and once you have a DSpace account, it's basically searchable on Google, okay? This is the advantage of OER repository. All your content will be able to be found, you can find it, you can basically locate it on using a Google search engine or any search engine. Okay, now I'm going to log in here and I'm going to guide you through some processes. So I just log in, once you have your password and your 
email address, you can sign in. Okay. And then it takes you to the UMS Open Educational Resources Repository. Now, this is essentially a repository, which means it's content stored on a server. There is no interaction. For example, it won't run JavaScript. It won't run any kind of animation on this particular page. It will only guide you through a link to your material. Now, the way DSpace classifies it, classifies information in the database or the way it uh, reposits information is in the form of communities. So although we belong to faculties, departments, PUSAT and, the, and so on and so forth, units maybe, in the repository, we are actually assigned to a community. Now, how is this community assignment done? For example, in Lab 1, you will have the Faculty of Business, Economics and Accountancy, and you'll have the Faculty of Computing and Informatics. So you will be assigned to this respective collection or the community based on your designation inside the UMS register, uh, uh, registrar's database. Okay, so if you are from FPI, you will be assigned to that collection. And if you are from Business, Eco Economics and Accountancy, you will be assigned to that particular collection. So this will follow your basic designation. Now, some of the lecturers may ask, what happens if you have collaborated with someone from other faculty, uh, for example, from FSSA or FSMP? In that case, you will have to, the depositor, you will, the collection will still be attributed to you, but you can add co-authors from other faculties. But in the end of the day, the collection will be attributed to you. Now you can see the Faculty of Business, Economics and Accountancy is doing very well because they are the top, they have the top in collections. So in this collection, you have a lot of e-articles, e-books, e-notes, e-poster, and ed educational vi videos. We look at these collections uh, in detail. I will zoom onto this. Okay. So e-articles, what is an e-article? Okay, now suppose I published in Daily Express, an article in Daily Express, and then it's in the printed uh, paper, okay? And then I scan it, and I post it here. It's actually a violation of copyright. So I cannot deposit any uh, image of a uh, printed material because the copyright belongs to Daily Express. Okay, so, but e-article means anything you create. For example, you create a digital uh, a page, a PDF page, generate a digital image with, uh, for example, um, a tag or an annotation, annotation a text below the image, or you write a single page review article, you can actually deposit as an e-article. Okay, now the, a word of caution with regard to this e-article, please do not upload any content from publishers. For example, you publish in Springer or Elsevier and so on and so forth, and then you download a PDF because you have access to it, and then you upload in this collection. Please do not do that because the copyright you have transferred to the publisher and they will flag it. They will flag it and they will inform UMS that the article is distributed under open license on the OER and we have to uh, withdraw that uh, content from the server or else there'll be financial implications. So this is one of the things which you should be careful of because generally these uh, publishers, they will not um, inform you at the first instance. You upload, they will not inform you. They will only inform you after a while when 200 downloads have taken place and then they will charge you for the 200 downloads, maybe for, for $50 a download and you'll have to pay them. So it goes to court. Okay, so please don't do that because that's a clear violation of the OER ecosystem. The other one is ebooks. Ebook means those uh, books which you have published under an open license. You cannot uh, upload an ebook which has been published, for instance, by a reputed publisher in this open space. Okay, e notes, uh, all your lecture notes are basically content. So all your PowerPoint slides you convert to PDF and you can upload them as e notes, as well as, for example, your uh, tutorials, your Amali. Um, books you can upload here. Okay, our laboratory manuals can be all uploaded here. Now with e-notes, another word of caution, please ensure that you do not uh, use any material which is copyrighted. Okay, don't use copyrighted material, use all material which is open license and which you have attributed. That's about e-notes. E-posters, okay, again for this e-poster, you attend conferences, uh, virtual conference, you can upload your e-poster here, okay, in a PDF file. Again, the same rules apply no usage of copyrighted material. And finally, educational videos. Now, educational videos cannot be deposited here directly. What we refer to as educational videos are links to external URLs. For example, you create some content on YouTube, 
you can deposit here providing that you have shared it on youtube using an open license okay uh, for example youtube has two types of licenses one is a cc by license a creative commons attribution so if you have shared it with that you can put it over here but suppose you have shared using standard youtube license which is another option then you cannot deposit it over here now different websites uh, or different uh, video hosting platforms have different kinds of licenses for example if you go to the youtube you'll only have two types if you go to other ones like Vimeo, they will give you the full license, full range of licenses. You have CC BY, CC BY NC, and so on and so forth. So only those which are shared under the open licenses can be shared under this, uh, you, uh, under this particular license. Okay, let's look at this particular, uh, for example, the recent submission. I just zoom out again. Okay, so you have this one. So this is a very good. Um, Okay, so Sharifa Hanum Ali, this is a, a very good link. So with a description and metadata and so on and so forth. So this is a this is the ideal way in which you should actually deposit. So you have an abstract and a descriptor. Now this will actually be searched by a search engine. So somebody suppose somebody use any of these keywords in the Google search, they will actually uh, it will return back this particular word or even the word Akinabalu. So Akinabalu. So that's the way. So this is the content. Okay, so this is a uh, lyric, maybe. So this kind of material is actually a create uh, a content which can be open license. Okay, so the content creator is that particular author, and this is the content. So this kind of simple material is actually also an OER. It's simple in terms of the uh, the uh, the display and so on and so forth. But of course, it has intellectual properties, so that's not simplistic. But what I'm referring to is the the way the document is presented. So even your poems, you can actually deposit here in the thing. For example, some of the uh, lecturers from SENI have also deposited script of a, of a play or a poem. So, so these are the collections from you. So you have e-articles, a wealth of e-articles, and we also have the e-notes, e-posters, and so on and so forth. Now, another question which is raised with regard to the articles is that, can you share your students' final year projects in this system? The answer is no, because those are under the purview of the library. So any like final year project, we cannot share here. But assignments, you can share here, provided that you give attribution to the student. Now, the student cannot deposit in OER. The student cannot register, only the lecturers and staff of UMS can register at the UMS OER. So if you are a supervising student and you want to deposit, for example, the assignments or reports, you can do that, provided that you uh, list down all the names of all the students at this at the site. Or else, again, it raises issues regarding the ethics. Okay, now this is about the different kinds of the collections and communities. Okay, so this is, so any of you who have registered, you can, um, you can start depositing content. Oh, I think many of you are already well versed in the system. So uh, you can, uh, I will go through the process of submission for those who are new. Okay, now how do you commence this process of submission? Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, this is another thing we should, is our license is CC, uh, BY, non-commercial and share alike. Okay, so this is the process of registration. You can go through your slides. And if you have done your registration now, if you're newly registered, we will give you the direct access immediately. Okay, now these are the collections. So the database actually categorizes content based on communities and collections. So community refers to your faculty and the collection refers to the type of the content. Okay, these are the various types of content which you can create and deposit. If it's an educational video, you'll have to post it on a public database or a public server like uh, YouTube or Vimeo, and then post the link over here. And you can have multiple options for content creation. For example, uh, you have an ebook with a link, okay, and you have created that ebook by yourself, and it's published by you. You can actually post the link in the OER repository. Now, what are the terms and conditions or the riders before you deposit? What, what are the uh, limitations? Okay, first one is copyrighted material. This one has to be clarified and reiterated 
please do not deposit any copyrighted material into the system because that will violate all the OER, uh, basically the OER guidelines. The next one is intellectual property and potential IP. For example, if you have created some kind of uh, work which you want to um, display at Pereka or the ITEX or any of the international or national exhibitions and which you want to file a copyright for or file an intellectual property protection, do not deposit it here. It will appear in prior at search and you will not be entertained. Your, your Basically, your copyright will not be entertained. Next one is plagiarism check. So please check for plagiarism because this is another factor which contributes to the OER. Okay, so if you have plagiarism, again, it will downgrade our reputation in the global OER ecosystem. Author contribution, acknowledge everybody who has contributed to that work. If it's a student group with six students, all their six names should be in the OER repository or else again, it relates, it causes ethical uh, problems. Okay, there have been cases in other universities uh, in which the students have uh, actually uh, taken legal action when lecturers have used their content without permission or without attribution. So this is one thing which needs to be uh, looked at. Student projects can be uh, deposited here, but not the final year projects. If it's a mini project, which you did, final year projects are under the jurisdiction of the library. They will have their own OER repository. Just as you have a OER repository for your articles in the library as well as your Newspaper articles, they will all go in the UMS repository at the library. Repurposed material can be used with attribution, and you should all agree to share under the license of the UMS OER. Now, lecturers also ask is once your content is in the OER repository, can it be taken down? Unfortunately, it cannot because once it goes into the domain of the uh, open license, it cannot be withdrawn because somebody may have already downloaded it and reused it. So we cannot delete material from the repository. So make a decision, a decision based on these particular parameters before you decide to deposit. Okay, we'll guide you through the process of depositing content of at the UMS OER. I'll go step by step. I also have a video tutorial on that. So if you have, it's a three minute video tutorial, you can click on the link and it'll guide you through the process of deposition, including how to deposit a video, okay? So the first thing which you need to have is your content itself. Okay, so usually what we will do, we will create a content in, for example, Microsoft PowerPoint or any of the content creation tools. You can use Adobe, Spark, and so on and so forth. It's entirely up to you. And you have to uh, define the format. Okay, for example, if your video, it will be in MP4 file. If it's a text, it may be in a doc file or a PDF. I would recommend you use PDF file. Then you upload your file into a database, you select the license as CCBY, you link, you deposit the link to that video in the uh, database and also make sure that the file is not broken link. Means sometimes we deposit in YouTube and then we decide we don't want to share that video again and then we delete the file. So that kind of file will create a broken link and again for OER that is not acceptable. Okay, for audio files, the same thing can be done. You can deposit your audio files in a, in the using this step by step approach okay. now for your lecture notes i would encourage you to uh, deposit your lecture notes in the oer provided that they don't have any other uh, like uh, copyrighted content you can attribute your, yourself using a tsl so on your slide for example the first slide it should say lecture note will have the title with your author name and the distribution of the license. So it's, of course, under UMS license. So if you have a CCBY license in your lecture note and you share it in OER, it will still carry the overarching license, which is UMS license. It won't carry the CCBY license. Okay, so let me guide you to the process. So it's clarified about, uh, you are clear about how it's done. Okay, so if you have difficulty uploading uh, OER material, I have created a video tutorial. It's a very short video, it's very simple. You can click on this uh, link anytime and it's about a three minute video which shows you how to go through the process of uploading content. Okay, let's look at the uh, deposition itself. Now, in order to deposit material, you have to be registered in the website and you should be assigned to a collection. So let me go into the process itself. So I'll zoom onto my page and you can see here Logout profile and a link to your submissions page. 
Okay, now these are unfinished submissions which I do for demo. Uh, I will just uh, guide you through the process because this shows you previous submissions. Now, when you commence depositing anything, you will see an icon here, start a new submission. So you click on the start another submission button here. Okay, so that will uh, uh, prompt the server and it will ask you to uh, select a collection. So in the, in my, uh, in, because I'm using an admin terminal here, I can see everything over here because this is an admin password. But if you see the, if you view your specific collection, you will see the, uh, a specific uh, faculty or uh, department or PUSAT or institute based on your respective allocation in the UMS database. Okay, so I can deposit anyone. So I just click on this e-articles, something from Blair Journal, e-articles or e-notes. I just use e-note. Now this will assign me to a specific location in the server. Now what this is, is simply a database with folders which are searchable. It's, there's nothing uh, very special about it. Now what's important is that you give your name here, uh, which is your last name. So I just put R and I just put for demo, I just put Kenneth. So use the same name as you would use in your scientific or your uh, publications, okay? Because this will actually appear in your Google Scholar. After you deposit it here, the advantage is that if you have permitted your Google Scholar to <laughs> screen the database and add new collect add new items it will actually add but if you have disabled that because many times you don't like to uh, allow google uh, scholar to use automated because anything which is having your name will be attributed to you and then it messes up your google scholar but if you enable the automate auto add this will actually come into your collection when you deposit it okay so this is the title you give your you give a title here so this will be your title the title of your article use a title which is descriptive uh, or other titles this is like how we have in our journal papers and your date of issue so you can give a date 22 and this will be our month june and so on and so forth i just do it quickly so it doesn't uh, because i have a tutorial for you already on the video this is your publisher so if you don't have a publisher you just write you just write leave this if you have some publisher, you can attribute the publisher. Citation. Okay, this citation is important. You can use any of the formats for citation. For example, you use the APA or the Vancouver or the Harvard. You use any of the citation method. You can copy that citation here. Okay, so this you cite as you would like your name to be cited. Or you, this is a series name. You don't have to use this. If you don't usually use this ISSN number. If you have a URL, you can edit over here. Okay, so you can add this over here if you have ISS number. Then you have your data type, which is your ebook, image, and so on and so forth. So if it's a lecture presentation, you can put it as a learning object. Okay, if it's a data set, even data sets can be published because some of the lecturers will share data sets with their uh, students. So you can publish, store it in the repository, and you can just share the link to the data set. Okay, so if it's, I say it's a learning object presentation. And then your language is actually not allowing, not permitting us to deposit in any beside this collection. So this is English, United States. So Vasa Malayo is not there in this. So we just select other if the language, if it's in English, we select English. Okay, so this one we have no control over because this is based on the repository uh, format which DSpace has given us. I think we have to uh, try and check the code and see whether Vasa Malayo can be added in that as well. Now, uh, this will guide you to the next process. So you have keywords. So you add your keywords uh, as many as possible. The abstract, because the keywords are the ones which are search on the search engine. You can add your abstract. And you have your sponsors. So this is used in case you have a grant. For example, FRGS has sponsored your research work or your particular study. You can add your FRGS grant or the screen grant, Innova C, UMS, and so on and so forth. The description. Uh, for example, if you have an ebook or YouTube link, you can have your link over here. Okay, it guides you to the next process. And then you have your file description here. So you describe your file, what, what's in your file. For example, I say lecture note. And then you can 
choose file and upload the file here. Okay. So when you choose the file, it will guide you through the process of uploading a file. So I can upload a file here into this. Okay, so once this is done, you can add more than one file. In case you have two contents, you upload and add on the file. So then you go to next, and then you have the description. Okay, so it was okay. So now I have not uploaded anything and I have not clicked on the link to submit because if I do that, it will uh, immediately prompt me to it will immediately appear in Google uh, Scholar. Okay, so I don't want to do that. It'll, so this allows you to review the submission and correct any changes if there are any, and then you go to next, okay? Now, this is the license itself. Now, uh, before you deposit or any, before you click on this I grant the license and complete submission, you need to read through that because once you click complete submission, you cannot withdraw that submission out again. So please check all the things I mentioned to you, copyright, plagiarism, attribution to the respective authors, and inclusion of all authors, and so on and so forth, the ones you have listed in the slide. So once you have this, you need to read, uh, read this. Okay, so this is the license granting UMS OER the right to, to uh, share your work under that respective license. Okay, so these are things which you need to take into account, especially if you're working in uh, conjunction with another agency. For example, you have a MOA or a LOU with some agency and you have created some material in association with that agency. <clears throat> you need to get permission from that other agency before you deposit and you click on this license. So once you click complete submission, the submission will get uploaded. It's validated over here. It's just, we just validated and then it's visible in your Google Scholar and searchable on Google. Okay, so I won't do that now. I will go back through the home page. And that's basically how you upload your collection. Now, once you have uploaded your collection over here, you will actually have a handle, okay? That's something which you can, I'll show you the handle itself. So for example, I go to my page, submissions page, and I'm going to find one of the content which I've deposited. For example, okay, so I click on this, okay? And this is actually a lecture note, it's an e-note, so it comes here. Now the URL for this is this handle. So this is the handle for the URL. Now this handle you can copy, and you can paste it in your social media, in your Twitter, in your Instagram, in whichever social media you use, you can just copy and paste this file. Now, one of the advantage of depositing uh, lecture notes in the OER is that you can share the link directly with your students. So you don't have to upload the lecture notes repeatedly within your Smart V3. You just use the link and then the student can access the link directly from the OER. Now, you we may not be aware of this, but uh, if you need your hits, for example, your hit count, how many people are actually accessing your lecture note from this particular website, you can actually obtain the data from JTMK. We can make a request to see the number of hits. Usually during our meeting, every the when we have our Penelaras e Pambalajaran meeting, they will uh, JTMK will actually provide a data of the hits. So that shows you how what's the reach of the UMS OER repository. So if you need data on your hits, we can actually get a hit count for you based on the uh, URL. So this URL is in generally searchable on the Google search. So if you go to a search engine, for example, Bing or Google, and you type a particular, for example, Erkinabalo OER, you will actually find that content which I showed you earlier, the one which was uh, from your faculty. Okay, so that's about how we work. Now within the OER, you can also search for specific collections. For example, if you want to search for Kinabalu, um, uh, you actually search and it will search within the search engine. Okay, so you can see the jellyfish of Sabah, Ujian hypothesis. You can see all this, all these contents inside by searching in. So the uh, OER database is searchable from within as well as from without. Now, we try our best uh, to create as much as publicity for this particular database so that our lecturers get exposure to a global uh, OER ecosystem. Okay. Now, I've guided you through the process of the uh, OER uh, dep deposition and registration and so on and so forth.
and uh, you can link this to your Google Scholar. Now, those of you who have permitted Google Scholar to add, add items automatically, the moment you deposit it in OER, it should appear in the Google Scholar. But please uh, note that this is a non-peer-reviewed site, a non-peer-reviewed article or content, so it won't carry weightage within the Q1, Q2, and Q3, just as we have categorized for the ELNPT and the KPI. So it won't carry weightage for that. It will carry weightage as non-index content or non-index digital publication. Okay. So we have to see the later. You can try out the version of the uh, the ELNPT. The trial version is there on our HR online website. You can try it out and check uh, what weightage is allocated for this in your respective faculty. Okay. So that's the Thing which you need to check before you create content which your how much weightage it carries for you so you can also link this in your smppi so if you're if you want to uh, go into the smppi i can guide you very briefly uh, to the smppi mr afizi with your permission can i show them the smppi i will show you how to deposit is it okay okay i will show you how to use smppi let me finish this part first so I can, and you can link to Smart V3. So basically everything can be linked out. Okay, now let me show you how you actually use SMPPI. Okay, I'll go to the SMPPI website, SMPPI. Okay. And you need to do this because of the simple reason that the OER repository is not tracked by our ELNPT. So you deposit it in OER first and you get your URL and your link, but you can you must deposit this in the SMPPI in order for it to be captured by the ELNPT. Okay, so you need to capture it. So let's see how we do it. So you log into your website, your SMPPI. Okay. And before you do this, you'll have to keep two things ready. One is your URL, the link to that article or the OER link, which I showed you just now, the handle. And the second thing will be the copy of the same article. Okay. Now the SMPPI is not a searchable database because lecturers sometimes ask, why should we deposit it at OER and why at SMPPI? OER is searchable throughout the world. It's searchable by the public. SMPPI is a private database which is only restricted to UMS users. So you deposit it in OER to, uh, to create a visibility for your content but in SMPPI to get recognition at UMS, okay? So understand the logic of the thing, why we deposit at two places. Of course, it is some lecturers may say it should be linked, but again, we cannot um, take the risk because uh, the OER is publicly accessible, okay? We don't want to create a security situation where somebody uses the OER to link back to our SMPPI. So we use this particular procedure. So how you do it is you go to your SMPPI web, and then you go to publication click on publication. Now in this, there is two versions of publication. Those of you who are new lecturers may not be aware, but there's publication and publication V2. Always use publication V2 because the first one is not uh, redundant. It's basically not used now, okay? So close. So something is here, which says, it gives you some instruction and you click here, add a new publication. I just zoom on, add a new publication, okay? In this one, you choose your article, general, or proceeding. You can choose article or you can choose general. Okay, it's still captured under the same non-index category. Now, before you do that, you have to search for something. I'll just search for a random word. Okay, I just um, search for something random. So, I just search for something which is not my page, it will block me, okay? So, it says no, no, nothing is there. So, search for possible duplicate. Uh, so, there's no possible, Duplicate, so I just next to proceed. Okay, so now you come into the once you have bypassed that first screening, which says there's no duplicate, you're not duplicating the article, you can go into this category. So, in the general, in the category, you can either choose general article. Okay, general, generally, we use the word general because this is a non index publication. So, the, the next thing will be here. So, this one now the SMPPI last year has been modified to incorporate many things. Earlier, it was a only book chapter, article, proceeding, and so on and so forth. Now it's actually even allowing notes, short surveys, novels, music, drama script, etc. Okay, so you have more courses as well. Okay, so everything is over here. And this will be uh, recorded in your 
ELNPT when you when you do the verification. So this you key in all the data, you key in the title. Okay, so there's a reason why they say capital letters should not be used for each word, like because uh, of the search engine. Okay, so that's the reason you just follow their format. All the data should be there. And if you have, if your, for example, if your OER is a, for example, we we prepare the Lapora Nahid, the final report for our project. We can actually put it over here under the respective category. Okay, so you select your respective category and you can put it over there. Publication, you fill in all this data. So if it's usually for this one, we say uh, national or university level publication. Okay. Journal level use, it's uh, it says non peer reviewed. Okay, don't select peer reviewed because otherwise it will not get verified. And then you have your submission year, your acceptance year, and so forth. You add all these contents. Okay, the index, index, indexing status, of course, is non indexed because open educational resources are non indexed. Impact factor and all doesn't count here, and you have indexing coverage is none. And then you have um, published because once it's in the OER, it's actually published online, and you save section A. Now, this is where you have to add your information for your authors, as you're all aware of, each and every author who has contributed. Uh, so don't uh, avoid or don't. Uh, Omit or forget to add the authors, or again, it creates problems. Then this is the one where you have to URL. So the URL is what you add over here. So this is the URL to UMS OER. So use the specific URL which you have added here and the uh, upload your file here. So that's why I told you there are two things which you need to keep ready. One is your URL and one is your file itself. So once you upload it here, you will submit for verification. I won't do that now because it will go for verification. Now, once um, this is uploaded into the database for verification, you will have to contact uh, Mr. ID. Uh, currently, Mr. ID at the library, Mr. ID Sofian is in charge of the verification. So, if it's not verified, uh, he will actually verify it. So, if you have a problem with verification or it's uh, too delayed, you can email Mr. ID. Okay, this will be done. And then you go back to submit for verification. So that basically completes the process of allocation or uh, incorporation of your article into the UMS ecosystem. Okay, so we go back to the. I'll cancel this and I'll log out from here. Okay, so that covers the two elements which you need to be aware of in order to get recognition for your content at both the UMS level and at the international level. Okay, if you have any questions regarding the procedure, if you have any difficulties or need any clarification, uh, we are open now for uh, the sharing session. We open for Q&A. You can ask me anything about the content. As far as I know, I will share with you. So some of you who may be interested in uh, references, there are a lot of references available at the OER website. So we have a website here. I'll share this link with you. This is the link to the OER repository. Okay, so you'll have a lot of links to content creation and content from this particular website. You just type Commonwealth of Learning, OER, OER resources, and you'll get all these links searchable. Okay, if you have any uh, questions, I can take them now. So these are some of, I uh, just showing you some of the references. This is OpenStax. OpenStax. Can I? Yeah. Um, one question. Yeah. Um, if you uh, regarding CC, mm -hmm. uh, if you have set one license, can we change to the other license later? Uh, you mean uh, in your, art no, the license is actually decided by the OER repository. I say, I mean, um, and then later we we decided we 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 will we can we want to decide to to change license later. I mean, in for the same material. License with copyright. Yes, yes. Oh, cannot cannot. Once it's in the OER repository, getting a copyright is challenging because it falls under to earlier right the the journals like Springer, Elsevier, and so on. They should not permit us to 
republish with copyright if it's in the repository. I mean, OA repository. But later on now they have changed their policy. So if it's in an open repository, you can still pu publish it under under the, 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 that particular publisher, provided you to transfer copyright. So this depends on the publisher. So you have to ask the publisher. Usually, uh, Wiley, Wiley will not allow. Only the Springer and Elsevier will allow you to uh, use this open OER and share with their license. I see. Yeah. Thank so this you. is publisher's specific. UMS will not allow. For example, if you publish here in OER, you cannot publish it under UMS publisher because it is non-commercial. Because UMS publisher will um, uh, will uh, connect with UMS will actually sell your material. So our license is CC BY NC, non-commercial and share alike. So they cannot use that material again. So this is something which you need to clarify. If you have any question regarding that, you can always email me if the respective lecturers. You can email me, I will clarify that, okay? All right. So these are some of the other websites you can visit, oercommons.org. Then there is the uh, free notebooks at OpenStax, which is a free repository for notebooks. You can uh, download because many of our lecturers did not have access to uh, printed material and access to a library during the pandemic. You can actually upload, uh, you can actually visit OpenStax and get content from there. There's a wealth of textbooks, in fact, from every level, even for school children until the university level, K 12, what they call that. K okay. Any other questions? You can post them in the chat in case you cannot have access. I will just check the chat window. Uh, yeah, hello, Doctor. Uh, I have a question actually. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, this is Dr. Imran uh, yeah, from yes. um, yeah, the yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask because then um, uh, previously uh, uh, the sir said that um, if there's an image and then we want to have uh, create the open access for that or something, or mm -hmm. if we are borrowing image from, you know, uh, some um, article which is already published. So in my case, if I already um, uh, draw an image or I, I just uh, draw a drawing or a model and then it is already published and then now it is published in a repository mm. in the repository of uh, one of the university yeah so you is my uh, property yeah. or yeah yes dr yeah. Iman, thank you for your question uh, yeah. with regard to that right if you have deposited in the repository of another university Okay, and it's available online. You cannot redeposit it into UMS repository. You can redeposit it in one way. I'll tell you how you do it uh, technically. If it's an OER image and it's not copyrighted and it's distributed under a CCBY license, you can actually uh, extract the image out. You can uh, repurpose the image, means you can paste it on a PowerPoint uh, slide or a, and convert it to PDF with the attribution to yourself, and you can redeposit it at UMS. Okay. This only applies if that image is not copyrighted and it has an open license. Does that answer the question? Thank you for answering. Yeah, thank you, sir. So one of the largest collections actually is the Pixar Bay. Survey. So this is the fix survey is actually one of the largest collections of public domain images. So this is one of the things which you can find here. So you can, of course, you have others as well uh, for the uh, video files. You can also get video files from video free pics, but all of them have different kinds of licenses. Okay, so this is where you get uh, images, uh, high quality images with which are in the public domain. Okay, this. Is 
there are multiple sites like this and you also have videos and so on and so forth. Any other qu questions or comments or clarifications you need? Usually the most common clarification is regarding the copyright claims. Uh, Dr. Kenan, yes, yes. This uh, material that we don't upload to OER, it, it can be our scribble notes, right? Uh, it can be our, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Afizi, I didn't get I it. Mean, I mean, the material can be our notes, right? Scribble notes. Yes, yes, correct. correct. Uh, you can do that. Yes. You can do. Drawings also, for example, you have a drawing on your, uh, drawing of some, uh, like a flow chart, which you look is, it should, can be anything. But please uh, put your attribution at the bottom, otherwise somebody will cite it. Even your flow charts can be uploaded there. Your things like that. I will show you actually what happens. Uh, I will just show you uh, what happens, for example, in PowerPoint, right? For example, we are using UMS uh, Office 365, okay? We create PowerPoint. I will show you what actually happens inside the PowerPoint. I will just show you so that you understand how you can actually use the image search in PowerPoint, okay? Now, normally what we would do, we would go and click on an image, copy it and paste it from a Creative Commons library, okay? But in this case, in the case of uh, we, uh, the Office 365, which is licensed to UMS, you actually have an image library inside. I will show you how it actually works. So you all you need to do is insert, okay, insert an image, pictures, and you can look for Bing pictures. Okay, so for example, I'm looking for Bing pictures. Let me look. So this is how you can use, leverage the search engine using the images from Bing. Now what this one will do, for example, I look for a simple word like currency same currency. So in this one, you can see there's a filter here which says Creative Commons only. Okay, you can do this. I think most of you may be doing this and I use this image. So when I incorporate, for instance, this image, insert into my slide, what will happen is that the license, right, is actually carried with the image in the metadata file. Now this one gets, you don't have to even state the license and so on and so forth because the attribution is actually here. So this photograph by unknown author is licensed under so and so is incorporated in the image. Only thing, don't delete this. Don't delete this attribution because this contains the link and then you can just continue. So this is another way in which now this is actually carrying the link here. So this kind of image is attributing the original author. So this is another method which is easier for the lecturers to use because you don't have to do multiple copy, paste and format. Okay. Any other question, Mr. Afizi? In the chat, I can see. Yes, there have been <laughs> Yeah, anyone's asking a question? I cannot hear clearly. I, I, yeah, I, I think there'll be no more questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, um, 
if if there, there is any problem with OER, um, should we go to uh, PP or should we contact? Uh, you you just you, any problem with OER, you you contact PP directly because uh, you can email uh, Nora Ozul and you CC to me. All right. Any problem because we are managing the admin here. The only the data you, you know regarding the hit count and all that that one we have to get from JTMK the, the so traffic data. Okay. Yeah, so new new user when they registered, uh, the system will approve it uh, straight away, or someone will approve it. The, it's the Nora who will approve it. We, in fact, if anyone has registered now, we'll approve it straight away. Okay, there is one problem which you may have. Once you register, it may not assign you to a collection. Okay, so you may you will see. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that in that case, you will contact Nora directly because the system uh, cannot locate your specific faculty. Okay, in that case we manually assign. Nora knows how to do that, so we just resolve it straight away. Okay. okay. Thank you, Nora. Within uh, <laughs> what we call our client charter, Piagam Palangan. Okay. Okay. Within 24 hours, we resolve it easily. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, um, we can end here, right? Yeah. Still yeah. Some more questions. Yeah. So, so thank, thank you very much thank to you. the. Uh, to the faculties for inviting uh, the Center for e-learning. Thank you, Mr. Afizi. Yeah, thank you also to Dr. Kenneth for the sharing. Uh, perhaps next time you can come to Labuan eh? <laughs> and do yeah, the face-to-face yeah, yeah. -face training. Yeah. yeah. So thank you also to, to others who, who joined the, the, the session. Uh, Nora and Zul are there. We are in the office next door. They are helping you to assist. So yes, anything, yeah. please contact us, okay? All right. So this session will will uh, will have our IDP point, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will ask them to record uh, the list. I think we have the recording, right? I will just download the list. I will ask Nora to help. Yeah. Okay. Will ask Nora to help. Thank you. I wish you a happy Friday, a blessed Friday, and a happy weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again, Dr. Kenneth. Thank you.